So I'm Rowan Reed and I'm going to try to explain how we quarter saw our logs. This is a 30 year old eucalypt that we planted back in 1988 and uh, it's just been felled. There were six meters of prune section, so this is half. So what I'm going to do with the bandsaw is first of all cut across the top to take off the growth stresses. Now the aim of this strategy is to release the growth stresses which are inherently in the tree, even something this fat has a small amount of them, and recover boards that are perfectly or near perfectly quarter sawn. That's what we're looking at here, where the growth rings go from one face to the other. And the reason for that is that in eucalypts and many other hardwood species, the shrinkage around the growth ring can be twice as much as the shrinkage up and down. So if you cut a back saw on board, represented by that section there, where the growth rings go this way, it'll actually shrink, not only through the initial drying, but repeatedly expand and shrink with changes in humidity, to the point that a tabletop that's one metre across can move six or eight millimetres through the a normal season in a house exposed to uh, humid winters, and dry summers or vice versa. So we want to avoid that by getting a quarter sawn board out of this. Now this is a tricky sawing pattern because if you cut quarter sawn boards you're likely to get reduced recovery and you could get what we call a little bit of spring in the board and we want to avo avoid that. Uh, there's more details on that in my book Hartwood. So first of all I'm going to remove the top and get myself a straight edge. Then if the, if the mill can go from side to side, I'm going to cut all the way through here and then take that section off, put it on the loader, then bring it back later and cut my quarter sawn boards through this way. And that'll be re-sawing. And there'll be some need for straightening cuts to manage the movement and stuff like that. So all that top section will go and then come back. Then the next cut, bearing in mind that that's where we're up to, will come through here and that piece will go off and I can cut quarter sawn boards maybe even change the angles I'm milling it to cut this section later into quarter sawn boards then when that's back off the mill I'll cut across here do the same when I bring that back to get quarter sawn boards and you can see that one more cut and I've taken out boxed out that central core now in a prune tree that central core will contain the knots, what we call the juvenile wood, and most importantly the pith, or the centre of the tree, which if you leave that in a piece of timber will invariably crack and, uh, and shrink around that point, making a very useless bit of timber really. So this last section, when it's straightened, will come back onto the mill and you can see I'll get quarter saw and boards like that. Now this sawing pattern is tricky because you've got to take segments off the mill, put it back on, but it is much more effective in producing a high quality product than if you just do your normal through and through cut all the way down through the log from the top to the bottom, which is really easy with a bandsaw, but what's the point of doing that if the quality of the product isn't up to scratch? You will get through that process some quarter saw and boards as you pass by the centre, but you'll miss the opportunity to get perfectly or near per perfectly quarter sawn boards right through the whole section. Now the recovery, the amount of boards that I'll get from that whole log will probably be about 50%. So 50% will end up in the waste pile, 50% will end up over here to go into the solar kiln to be dried. Now that sounds wasteful, but I like to think of recovery to do with quality of log. This is about 85 centimetres in diameter, midway average diameter. There is about 1.5 cubic metres of wood here. I hope to recover 0.6, well over half a cubic metre of quarter sawn board. The width of the boards will vary a little bit depending on what I can recover, but between 5 and 7 inches uh, across. And for that product, given it's from a pruned log, I'd be expecting about two and a half thousand dollars a cubic meter after it's dried through the kiln. So a number of steps in that process, obviously they cost me time and capital to go through there, but the quality is such that in a tabletop 
This timber won't move as much, it won't tend to cup during the drying process and it will be a higher quality timber. I believe similar to what we used to get from our old growth forests because pruning removes the knots, large diameter that I've been able to achieve here by giving the tree plenty of space to grow, about uh, 100 stems per hectare might be the average stocking where this came from. The growth rate you can see here is in the order of two to three centimetres diameter per year. And we know with eucalypts that after that initial juvenile phase, the wood density out here will be equivalent or very close, not significantly different to what comes from an old growth forest. So we're actually looking here at producing possibly one of the highest grade eucalypt timbers, quarter sawn clean timber from a tree that's just 30 years old that I planted on a farm in a conservation planting for shade and shelter and erosion control along our creek. And this is what we really talk about. If we get the management of the trees in the paddock to get the highest quality, we can justify the cost of single tree harvesting, selective logging if you like, which releases growth in the forest and allows my higher value understory species that I'm planting down there like uh, blackwood and silky oak and red cedar to grow on. This is a long-term store of carbon if this timber is used in furniture, but back in the forest there is still a forest. So this is milking a capital asset for an income that can justify the ongoing planting and management of the forest on our farm. Anyway, let's see how we go through the process. I'll, uh, I'll show you most of the steps as we go through the sawing. The first one, as I said, will be cutting this top off. Then I'll try to get this whole piece off. And you may be interested in, that's going to be a heavy piece of wood, how we get it on and off, and essentially a manual mill. Uh, this log was actually too heavy for the front end loader, so we loaded it using a cable off the logging winch off the back of the tractor. But for lot turning this section now, bringing pieces off and on, I'll be using just a four wheel drive logging winch that's attached to the front end loader and runs off a remote control from the battery of the tractor. Let's see how we go. We'll just turn that off. See that little bit of lift there? The top board, I've released the growth stresses. Now I said there's always growth stresses, but small diameter logs, you get a high degree of growth stresses because they're there to hold the tree up in the wind. So in a larger log, they're less important because the tree's quite sturdy. But it still means that when I cut, before I cut these boards off later, I'll have to do a straightening cut. In fact, I might take off both those edges to release more of the stresses before I do that step. So we're getting there. We've now taken off our first section that we'll remove and then I'll turn the log and we'll continue the process. It's called breaking down. I like to think of it as releasing those growth stresses. So the timber that I've got to relax before I cut those final boards. So given the orientation of the log now, I'm actually going to rotate it this way because the mill has rollers on that side. So the next piece we'll cut out will be this segment here. So once again, we've got an expression of growth stresses there. All the time the tree is trying to get shorter on the outside where the wood is in tension. Much better to release those stresses now than when you're cutting boards at the final stage where they start moving around. So this piece comes off, we rotate, we rotate that way, cut there. And we've got two more sections before we get the core out. So the core of the tree is down here. 
I can get quarter sawn boards from there to there. So I've got to cut out this section. I might turn it over or I might not, depending on whether I can get the depth that I'm looking for. So this middle section might look square enough, but as it dries around that core, it's going to twist and crack. So there's no point even putting it in the kiln. It also contains what we call the juvenile wood, wood laid down when the trees are young, and also all the knots and stuff. So, so now we have our first, what I call the flitch. The quarter sawn section has to be sawn that way, and I'm going to get at least three two inch quarter sawn boards. Before I do that, I'm going to have to square it off because as we remove the gross dresses, this piece moved. It's not square and it's not straight. If you look along that line, there'll be a slight curve. Now if I do that now, I save a lot of work later on, straightening the boards, and I get the maximum width quarter sawn boards that I can. Because I'm going to end up cutting that way, I'm going to recut this, turn it right over, get the square on the other side, and then straighten up there and work down. So they're the first two boards after all that work, but you'll notice when I came through to the end there was no evidence of spring at all. Here we've got a wide quarter sawn board and you can see how clean it is. You can see here how we've got stability and the growth rings run across the face as required for quarter sawn board. So now I'll take these off, turn the bottom one over, put the crank over that low, turn that into a quarter sawn board, then rework all the others through the process. So this is it, this is what we recovered out of that three metre log and uh, you can see how we've got perfectly quarter sawn boards and uh, they're clear of knots because of my past pruning work. And all this timber now will go into the kiln and be dried. There will be some further losses after drying when we do the edging but essentially we've got two inch green timber that can be dressed down to a final product of 40 mil for tabletops. So this is our solar kiln, it's a six metre long triple skin which makes it insulated, poly house with an aluminium frame. The key elements of it is that it, it's sealed so it holds the humidity in. Now to dry timber, particularly green off saw, and to avoid any of the early drying problems such as checking and collapse, particularly in a eucalypt species, we want to keep the humidity up. But if we also get the temperature up, we can move water from the centre of the piece to the outside and then, as I've controlled it with the computer, the high humidity air will be exhausted 
and drier air are replaced when the conditions are appropriate. So the kiln allows me to take green timber rather than air drying it outside and risk the drying degrade, put it into a kiln and over some summer, maybe uh, 80 days, a bit over two months, I can get uh, up to 16 cubic metres of uh, kiln dried timber out of it. We've done about four loads so far. Uh, I'm learning how to use the kiln and I think we've got uh, just the right product for price for a small scale high quality timber enterprise like, uh, like here on our Bamber Agro Forestry Farm.